Hi everyone, welcome back to Japanese Politics 101. Today we're going to talk about the opposition parties and their role in the dynamics of how Japanese politics is formed and how it is manipulated. Michael, the LDP is the monster in the room. It dominates the lower house and the upper house, and they have to go against the opposition parties from time to time. They have to go against them, but not in an electoral way. Electorally, the opposition parties are basically moribund at this time. Now that's not always been true, at least two times in the past opposition uh, coalitions have been able to topple the LDP from power and take power briefly uh, in the 90s, but more importantly in the big tw 2009 to 2012 DPJ-led governments. Right. But at the present time, it's, it's verse, really David versus Goliath. Mm -hmm. That being said, David does pretty well sometimes, and certainly in the arena of public opinion, uh, the, the opposition parties punch way above their weight in terms of visibility in terms of uh, ability to influence and uh, sometimes even louse up the government's plans. Right. They don't play just a gadfly position. They also actually lob bombs. We talked last week about the role of scandal in Japanese politics mm -hmm. and that seems to be the fuel that the opposition uses. And according to certain scandals, they can coalesce a, a, a cohesive group and really, you know, have that ram battering the door. That's true, but only because of the procedures within the diet. The, the diet has put aside time for the opposition to speak. And in fact, they have a majority of the amount of time uh, that parties are allowed to interact with each other, either in the plenary sessions, in the big sessions in the main, in the main hall, or in, more importantly, bud, diet budget committee, right. uh, when the where, where the Prime Minister really has to answer in a way that looks like a tennis match. The questions, some of which are quite, quite sharp, that are put to them by members of the opposition. Those are televised. It's a lot of fisticuffs from time to time. It's, and and in, 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 if it, while it is not in real fisticuffs right. very not, not, often. Not like in South Korea. Not, not like in South Korea or in Taiwan where they right. really go at it. Uh, with chairs and such. Nevertheless, there are times when things get testy and the, the uh, person who's the, the chair of the, of the committee has to say, okay, turn the mics off. Everybody come up here. We'll discuss this. We'll try to figure out to how to stop this, you know, mm -hmm. th this kerfuffle, as you, as you always say, on, that's ongoing on the floor. And a few minutes later, they turn back, turn the mics back on, and, mm -hmm. and, and the proceedings uh, start once again. Now, yeah, but the reality of, of Japanese politics is that eventually there's going to be a vote in the diet. And in the diet right now, uh, the ruling coalition has control over both chambers. The LDP, in fact, by itself, ruling without coalition would be in control of both chambers and could pass any legislation right. that it wanted to. It's in coalition with the Komeito for two reasons. One, that the Komeito uh, provides a lot of the votes at election time that go to LDP district candidates. And then in return, the Komeito has to listen to the LDP and m the LDP has to moderate its demands when the LDP could really run a dictatorial government. Right. And so the two are in a nice relationship and they dominate to the extent where they even are challenging constitutional limits. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really interesting in terms of the opposition. They have to, with whatever forces that they can muster, hold off revision of the constitution because right now they can't stop legislation. What they can do though is stop Mr. Abe and his people from going the next step, which is to actually changing the fundamental law of Japan. Right. A lot of the opposition is, is gathered on just criticizing uh, the prime minister. They have protests outside of the prime minister's office and in front of the diet that have been going on for two or three weeks now. That's right, and, but there's not always a, a good coordination between outside demonstrators and opposition figures. Their interests are not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of the time, uh, the, it's mostly people who are associated with the far left parties, the communist party and the socialist party, uh, which with some connections to the very tiny liberal party. And that's one of the aspects of the current mix of opposition parties that is so stunning mm -hmm. is how many of them are there are and how different their various interests are. And 
for those who are into classic confrontational politics, the actual parties that engage in confrontation are actually the, the minority of the minority. They are just a tiny sliver. Right. Uh, those who are called the opposition, uh, such as the very new party that was just established this week, uh, the, the National um, Democratic Party, or I'm not sure exactly what English translation they've chosen, they're so new, uh, the Koko Min, Min Shito, uh, that New has, logo. It's a new logo, it's a new party, it's, it's, it's a, a merger of elements that were part of the DPJ, then exploded. It's not bad news. It's, it's not necessarily bad news. I mean, we're not being critical of, of the coalition of forming to, to have a new party. But they went from 106 seats to 62, from being possibly the, the number one opposition party to being the number two. Uh, nobody likes them. Their popularity is close to zero in public opinion polls. They're a temporary measure, mm -hmm. okay. And then we have the Constitutional Democratic Party. I mean, all the names are going to be very similar to one another, and they are, uh, which is the main opposition, which is led by Edano Yukio which did very well in the election last year and is an established idealistic party. But then there are all kinds of micro parties now, yep. which has not been the case in Japanese political life. But nowadays, because of public funding for political parties, if you can get five diet members together in both houses, you get funded in terms of electoral politics for the year by the taxpayer. And that has been the way that Micro parties have become the way mm -hmm. of 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 the uh, of the opposition. Instead of having a good, you know, two or three party system, right. it is in fact fractured. The the opposition is fractured into splinters mm -hmm. and just just completely tiny. And some of them are so similarly named. There's in the House of Councillors, there are two parties now with the name Hope. One is a far-right rev constitutional revisionist nutbag party. <laughs> and there's the other is a protect the constitutional uh, socialist liberal party with the same name. One is called the Kibo no Kai, the, the Association of Hope, and the other one is called the Kibo no To, the Party of Hope. And they both are tiny and they're both ideological opposites, and mm -hmm. they have the same name, and it, this is the case throughout the opposition. Nobody, unless you're a real policy wonk or a junkie like you and me, cares, cares That's or right. even knows right. the names of the parties anymore in the opposition. Mm -hmm. It's the LDP and not the seven dwarves, the 15 dwarves, right. and you can't keep their names straight. Well, nobody really wants to be the LDP. They want to be like the LDP in terms of political throw weight, but nobody, I mean, the LDP is so massive and it has certain components, I mean, because it's built up of, of several factions, it really does represent, to a large degree, all of the interests of, of the Japanese business uh, associations and also uh, typical voters. Yeah, that's the, one of the major problems in terms of the opposition as it stands. Who are your core voters? Mm -hmm. What is your coalition? What is the base, who, who's gonna put up your posters? Right. Now, in the case of the Constitutional Democratic Party, the number one opposition party, what it turned out was college students brought in through social media, through Twitter, through Facebook, turned up for the purposes of getting this party going. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was much, not much more than a Twitter account when it was running for seats. Right. It was just, it was Edano Yukio's Twitter account and people just glommed onto it. But if you're going to have staying power, if you're going to be a party, you have to have a core base group. Now for the DPJ, the previous umbrella opposition party, the core group were the labor unions. Mm -hmm. Now that in most, advanced industrialized democracies is a bad way to start because the labor unions are only a small part of the actual labor force and they have a bad rep. Everywhere in the, in, in the industrialized world, unions have a bad reputation, but at least they had something in the case right. of the DPJ. The current set of opposition forces have, n all of these different splinters have no, no fundamental basis underneath them 
And that, in fact, is one of the reasons why they can splinter so yeah. easily, well, because they don't have, they have nothing to lose. Well, not only that, but to keep your supporters cohesive, you need to give them rewards for being, you know, uh, loyal to your party. That would be if in the wonderful case that an opposition actually turned over power right. and was able to, to do something for its supporters. But with the LDP in such a strong electoral position, mm -hmm. both in terms of long-time history, but also in terms of structure of the electoral system, uh, with the various disparities that emphasize and, and strengthen the LDP core vote, anybody who wants to get something done has to go to the LDP. So yeah. the, the, the basic division in Japanese politics between the ruling party and the opposition is not as it is in many uh, industrial democracies between a left center and a right center party. Mm -hmm. uh, you would want to call the LDP a conservative right wing party, but it isn't really, especially if you look at That's the a, economics, right. that uh, Abenomics, it's a left wing party's <laughs> dream. You know, budgets as big as we can make them. Crank it out. Monetary policy, as loose as we can right. make it. And there's not a government in Europe or in North America that wouldn't love to have that mm -hmm. as a possibility. And certainly ones in a so any social democratic party in Europe would love to be able to do what the LDP is doing. Mm -hmm. What's the division right now, at least, in, in, the, in politics, especially with the falling away of the labor unions, is you have a choice. You can either vote for the pragmatist who's gonna you know, get that dam for you or get that road fixed, and that'll be your LDP member, or you can vote your heart. And, you're, and you can vote for, if you are a staunch nationalist, right-wing flag waver, you can vote for those people. Or if you are an idealist, protector of the, protect the Constitution, right. don't change Article 9, there are, there are idealist parties for that as well. And so it's between pragmatists and idealists. Mm -hmm. And that is the way that the Japanese opposition currently operates. And that swing vote is really very heavy, isn't it? I mean, when they do polls here and they ask people, what is your party affiliation? Maybe 40% answer, yes, I have a party affiliation. I feel strongly about this. The vast majority of voters say, I don't know. I'm, I'm waiting for the poll to come out. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really, actually, the, the only party that, that really competes with the LDP is I don't, I, don't have, I don't have a party. Right. Uh, and you know, they're both up in there in the 40s. Uh, that, uh, then yeah. the opposition has to slice up the remaining 20% mm -hmm. between themselves. That being said, the, the, uh, the one thing that anyone ever wants to talk about Japanese politics always can say, but, is as long as the voting rates stay low, and under Abe, they've stayed in the, in the low 50s. Right. The LDP she sweeps wins. the board That's right. with very little support. Right. No more than 17% of the total electorate. Only 17% can give you a two-thirds majority uh, in the House of, of Councilors and the House of Reps. Somebody's done their mathematics. Yeah, yeah no, the, 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 if you could just sure. work it out. All you need is 17% of the voters. Uh -huh. uh, the moment voter participation ticks up just even a few percentage points, a lot of LDP seats would mm -hmm. topple over like dominoes into the opposition. Some and hot that, issue. And that's what keeps the opposition from completely fragmenting because if somebody gets the, it creates an umbrella party, and mm -hmm. that somebody in the previous years was Ozawa Ichiro, who did it for 20 years and now he's on the sidelines and there's no one who's taken his place. But if there's someone who can put together an umbrella party that can really challenge on a centrist basis the image of the LDP as the only pragmatic alternative, mm -hmm. then we can have a change of government very easily as and consequently, Mr. Abe's main interest always is keep things dull, Right. keep it boring mm -hmm. because the moment the people get interested in politics and they show up at the polls, the LDP could be toppled by what currently looks like a hopeless opposition. Right. And all they need is one electric issue, right? Some issue that could kind of uh, electrify the, the, the population to, to swing one way or the other because that 40%, 50% of unaffiliated voters can carry the day. They can certainly, if 10% if of them show up to vote, the, the outcomes can be completely different. And indeed we saw that. Mm -hmm. 
the, the, uh, the voting rate in the 2009 election was nearly 70%, rather than the, which is 15 points higher than it is now. And the LDP was absolutely smashed mm -hmm. in all of its main bastions, except for the few holdovers, in the, in, mostly in Kyushu and in, in the Chugoku region, mm -hmm. uh, in the farthest of Western Japan. It could be, they can be wiped out. And that and the television time represent what a, basically are, is a virtual opposition. Mm. Japan's main LDP operates, yes, as a party that could run a dictatorial regime, but Mr. Abe in particular, because he's known failure, seems very sensitive, mm -hmm. and many of the people who are in the party are very sensitive to the fact that they know they are on precarious ground, right. and they can't push too hard, and they cannot push too fast, mm -hmm. and that has been the characterization of the Abe administration. Go slowly, we'll get mm -hmm. it done, and we will just simply not rock the boat, keep the country quiet, and don't give them right. that one issue that mm -hmm. could turn everything over. Michael, in addition to having a uh, tremendous fortitude and guts to break away from whatever party you are a member of, because to get into politics in the first place, you have to have an, a party affiliation. And have the money. And the money. <laughs> what does it take to form an opposition party, a, a, a splinter group? What, what are the technical requirements for that? Well, you first have to get elected uh, to the diet, and you can put together a party there are rules regarding uh, how you can poach members from mm -hmm. other parties that you can't just simply go around with, with a big but there top are, pile there... of cash and say, if you join my party, I have a lot of money. Uh, because sometimes if you leave a party, you are immediately disqualified from entering another one for until the next election. Mm -hmm. uh, there, right. there are all kinds of internal rules. But there regarding... are free floaters too. There are free floaters too. Nobody but, wants to touch. But there's there's... To put together an opposition party is technically not very difficult, but in fact proves to be quite hard because of the structures that have to do with mm -hmm. how people get elected, especially if you're an independent, you're going to have been elected as someone who is representing a district, and there it's really a private fief. Mm -hmm. It's That's probably right. been handed down from, from father to son to daughter to, to son-in-law, uh, it's not something that is necessarily ideologically or party driven. Right. And at that point, yes, you can put together parties relatively easily in theory, but in fact, to get people to take their personal family legacy and put it on the line mm -hmm. and join an opposition when there's really no need to, it proves to be a, a, not on a, a barrier that's there in, in de, fa de facto, but that's not there de jure. Right, and plus getting from zero to what you would qualify for getting state funds for establishing a, a political party, five plus five. No, that's it's a, just five, just five in, in both houses. That's the only reason the socialists still are around. Uh, it's, it's the level is relatively low, but everybody's a prima donna. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to be leader. Well, even, I mean, even to get to that level, you have to be somebody. So somebody admires you, somebody, some of your colleagues admire you, so you are a person of, of, of some importance in a political party that you're already affiliated with. That's right, and the political parties, the, the uh, opposition parties in particular, because they don't have ideological basis to start off right. with, are very, they have a very hard time staying together mm -hmm. uh, because they are brought together for electoral power positions, and we saw that kind of cooperation in, in the last two ele national elections with the communists siding with the non-communist opposition and helping them mm -hmm. win big and coordinating in order to somehow push more opposition figures into seats at the cost, in this right. case, of the communists themselves lost uh, a great deal of ground. To, to coordinate all of that and not work for your immediate friends and work for the greater good is a wonderful idea, but it's not something that's li likely to happen uh, anytime soon. You know, there are lots of opposition parties currently in existence. There are lots of political parties in the graveyard as well. And it seems like in spring, during this time of the year, you see a lot of them kind of come up, the, several of them 
come together to form a coalition or maybe in advancement of the coalition, they actually form a, a bonded party. That's right. And then those will try to coalesce into groups of at least five individual members by the December deadline mm -hmm. when the, the Internal Affairs uh, Ministry then certifies these parties as being as having the, 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 the necessary five members. Right, and when you have more than five, you get a little bit more money, and, and if you, you have get, 10, you get a little bit more, more money. money. And that's right, and you, you, you want to be mm -hmm. able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, being an independent has various costs. Mm -hmm. in, the, in a summation, the, uh, the, the, the opposition here is currently has no chance of taking over on an electoral basis without major either structural changes, as happened in 93, 94, which changed from medium-sized districts right. to singles-member districts and a proportional list. If there's some kind of thing that, some kind of change that, that of that nature, we could have a more viable opposition. Or in the case of the LDP, that it fritters and, and that there are people who are tired of waiting for their turn of power as Ozawa Ichiro was mm -hmm. uh, and who voted against the government uh, and then burst out. And to be honest, many of the opposition parties that exist today are basically only splinters, dis, dis, splinters right. from the LDP of the mm -hmm. past. Right. Members of the LDP and their followers who split off because they were impatient. Mm -hmm. And that became the core set of legislators for what is today an, op an opposition party. So that from within the LDP itself comes its own opposition. Right. The opposition parties of Japan is a fascinating aspect of how Japanese politics is run. Please stay tuned.